WCON 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Hello, the name of the show is We Should Know. I'm your host, J.W. Simmons. My guest today is Joel Rose. I want to thank you for being with us. We're talking about history today, and Joel knows a little bit about history. President of the Sam's County Historical Society. Uh, also happens to be the current and recent director of the Sam's County History Museum. Uh, also, he's, uh, I think you're the president of the Morris Creek Battleground. Uh, that is, that's a federal, that's a big, huge area of yeah. federal operation down there with federal folks running and uh, you, you, you're president of that. Also, you serve on the Samps County Waterways. Uh, it's a bunch of stuff I'm sure I'm missing, but that just gives folks an overview. Joel, my first question to open the show for you is going to be, what and when did you become intrigued with history and tell us what that was there one thing that happened or have you always had this inclination to know more about how we got to where we are he, today? Uh, J.W., uh, my dad was from Newton Grove. And of course, he, when you're from Newton Grove, you can hear everybody in Newton Grove. And, um, uh, and of course, I've learned over time that everybody in Sampson County is related. You know, like you and I discussed, mm -hmm. we're cousins four times over. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Um, but um, uh, knowing your cousins, knowing your family and where they place, uh, knowing your family's history, uh, we did a lot for it. My dad bought one of these uh, Sampson County Heritage books years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, of course that piqued my uh, piqued my interest. Um, but also, I, I, I met uh, Oscar Bizzle. Mm, probably about 1992, 93. And Oscar, you know, he was a, a historian as well, an excellent historian. Mm -hmm. And he started inviting me and trying to get me involved in the Sampson County Historical Society, which, again, he was the president, founder, and all that others. But, um, uh, and I, I found myself uh, learning from him and studying, and he asked me to do some tasks on occasion, look up this person, who was this person, and I'd go over to the library to their history room, and I would research. And um, I, I became familiar with um, most of what they had in the history room. So by and large, it's just been a ongoing uh, progress that I, I read a little bit more, and I want to find out about this family or curiosity about this family. And then I, I became involved with Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's like when you do a family tree, it's kind of like doing a crossword puzzle. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just trying to, mm -hmm. you know, like a hobby. And um, uh, I've done a lot of those for different people just just out of curiosity, just as a favor. Or, uh, and I enjoy doing it like I did yours. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, um, uh, you know, it's been a gradual progress or process. Um, and, and, and now at the same time, I became more involved with the uh, Samson County Historical Society's newsletter, the Huckleberry Historian. Now, this thing uh, started out, you know, 1979 uh, with Oscar Bizzle doing it. He typed it. And it was usually two or three, three pages. Wasn't very much to it, but it's grown over time. And then in the early uh, 2000, uh, Kent Wrench, the late Kent Wrench, who was a great guy and, and an avid historian, um, took it over. And Kent lived in the Mingo area, uh, and, and that brought a different flavor to what we've known about the county. I mean, being from the Clinton area and my dad's from Newton Grove, I knew about those places. But I didn't know much about the Mingo area in, mm -hmm. in northwestern <clears throat> Samson County. <clears throat> Pardon me. But um, um, it, I started reading his newsletters, and I became and doing newsletters or doing articles for for Kent Wrench when he asked me to. Mm -hmm. So I did more and more articles. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Kent passed away in 2014. And um, anyway, so it, it changed hands a, a few times. But um, it's, it's 
eventually came to me. And so uh, I'm the one that's, uh, I'm, I'm currently the editor. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and get interesting articles uh, that make it worthwhile and photos. And um, and so, and I'll, I'll put it together and it's a, it's a quarterly newsletter. It's, um, I'm not sure how many subscribers we have right now, but at one point we had um, well over 350 subscribers. And th these are people all over the country. Well, it's and, a fascinating, to me, it's a fascinating document in, in the sense that when you read it, y you almost are pulled in to that moment in time. And, mm -hmm. I, and I don't know whether you are designing it like that or whether you, you put it together like that, but it really draws you in. I, I would encourage anybody that wanted to, to get that, to, mm -hmm. to get with you and find out what they need to do, because it's a fascinating little document and you don't see that kind of thing anywhere else. Well, um, you know, we try. And, and what, what I want to do is to show a little bit from, from different areas. You know, I, I, I won't do a, um, an issue all about lower Sampson County or one all about Newton Grove. I'll try and draw a story from here, maybe something from the Revolution days, mm -hmm. um, maybe something of a human interest story, good photos, but just, just to make it interesting. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and, our, and even though our, our historical society has not met since January of 2020, and we probably won't meet again until October 21, but... Uh, we continue to put out the newsletter, and you know a lot of people don't have that opportunity. I mean, they were typically they would uh, pay for their subscription at a meeting, mm -hmm. and and our meetings were held uh, the second Saturday in the months of January, April, July, and August. And we'd always have, well, I mean, we had really good attendance. We were yeah. averaging 60, 70 people absolutely at these meetings. So anyway, but. Um, uh, that that's a lot how it got started, and and I get a lot of um, I feel a lot of questions. You know, people will call me out of the clear blue and ask me if I can help them find this or help them find that. No, I'm glad to if I can. So it's almost um, it's, it's almost like you're that guy that learned how to swim by just jumping in the pool. Well, I mean, it's just it, it just kind of came gradually yeah. over time. Yeah. Okay, and you you piece this together, you piece that together, and you learn who was in the revolution, what they did, and, and what this house was, and where that stood. Well, and um, and again, this is um, this is a very old county. I mean, it's, um, it was older. And uh, well, again, the county was uh, incorporated in 1784, and it was split out of <clears throat> pardon me, split out of Duplin County uh, that year. But uh, when they made the division, it was like they went straight down the middle of the two counties. I mean, it's right, uh, hmm. right in the exact middle is where this. Actually, the the old Duplin County Courthouse was located on what's now uh, Courthouse Road or Nursery Road. You know, it runs by uh, Smithfield Foods offices mm -hmm. near Warsaw. Yeah, and um, it was almost like they said, okay. Everything on this side is going to be Duplin County, and everything on this side is Sampson County. And they just drew a line down the middle. That's right. It was, it was just that was amazing. And so how they people did that. had to then dissect their local government needs to That's either right. Clinton or well. Before Kansas. that, if if like for example, if um, uh, before 1750, if um, someone wanted to make a lay a claim for a piece of land. Uh, they would go down to Wilmington to the uh, clerk's office. They were, it was under British control then. And they say, okay, I want this piece of property. They say, fine, go have it surveyed. And of course, surveying was expensive. You know, if you remember uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, you know, they were surveyors and they made a lot of money from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the the larger the, the lot the, that you bought or claimed, the more expensive it was to have it surveyed. So anyway, um, but if you had to do that, it was probably a two-day ride to Wilmington from here on horseback. You didn't have very good roads. And then, or at least a day and a day back. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a, a kind of a hassle trying to do things legally and whether it's a marriage license or court or whatever. So um, it was easier to to divide the counties up to smaller units 
and to, where you could travel there and back in one day or get stuff done in a day. So, do you, do you look back at history sometimes, and can you see the footprint of land ownership back then, kind of transcend today, and still see land that was established in ownership? by certain surnames, mm -hmm. and today that <clears throat> land is still owned by those same people? Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you one for example. It's just like you were, you were talking about, uh, and that is um, if you go down 421 to the Taylor's Bridge area, mm -hmm. um, just before you hit that rest stop, yeah. you'll come to an intersection with um, Edmund Mathis Road mm -hmm. and Union School Road. Well, Edmund Mathis was... You know, I think he's like the patriarch of the Mathis family in this area. And, um, and and that road is named for him. And he acquired land grants right in that area. OK, so you're going to find uh, a lot of those Mathis families are still on land that was originally part of what he would have claimed. OK, was so, like granted to them from by the king or something. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you can look at all the names. That's right. OK, now, but here's the way it works. If, if it was done before the for the revolution, for uh, before 1776, it was granted by the king. After the revolution, it was granted by the state of North Carolina. Hmm. OK, so uh, and I've got a land grant map and then that that, um, uh, that shows these grants. I don't know if you've ever shown it to you. I mean, it's a. a we we need to yeah. get together on that, but it's uh, uh, there's a lot of that that the family uh, land belongs to the family from way back in colonial days. Yeah, there's still a lot of that around. We uh, we're going to kind of uh, go to a break here in just a second, but I wanted to kind of touch on where we're going uh, when we come back. I want to kind of segue over into your new job responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, as director of the museum and uh, and talk about that a bit. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're talking with Joel Rose, a uh, local historian uh, that's very much and aggressively involved in history. We'll be back in a moment. Call a friend. Stay tuned. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. Welcome back, folks. We're talking with Joel Rose. The name of the show is We Should Know, and we're talking about history. Joel, uh, you are not only impressive in the knowledge you have, but the passion you have for history. And your most recent uh, position that you're in in the county is director of the Sampson County History Museum. I want to call folks' attention again to that museum. A lot of folks know about it, but there's a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got nine venues, uh, I think, now. Well, actually, you got more venues than nine, but you got nine buildings, I believe, on that yeah, property. Eleven. Eleven on the yeah. property. And that's not counting the outhouse. <laughs> and that's an important part of it. So, so as we talk about it, what I want to do is kind of get your, um, and, and we can discuss any one of those buildings, whether it's the agricultural museum, the Bunning House, the Holmes House, whatever it may be. But I want to get your vision as now the director of the museum as to where you see the museum going in trying to connect with people throughout the region. Mm -hmm. uh, because you, you've obviously been in a leadership role for some time with history in this area, but now it's kind of a functional thing. You, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the director of the museum is the kind of the go-to person. Uh, you've been unofficially that for some time, but, mm -hmm. but now people come to you and they, they've got not only a question, but they may have some strange looking artifact that they found and they want to know, mm -hmm. is this something the museum would like to have. Tell us how. Tell us what your vision is for the museum and how you see it under under your leadership connecting more with the larger communities. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, most of what we have at the museum has been built on donations. Okay, but we have to be careful about what we accept in the future because we might have so many of this item or so many of that item when we really need to concentrate on uh, if we already have one. We 
we we won't need another one. And uh, uh, it's hard to tell folks no sometimes. Mm -hmm. But um, but again, we we are really tight for for room. We 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 need more room. And um, uh, right now we've we've again we've got eleven buildings. And um, let's see the 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 newest and the the one that uh, I guess we want to feature the most is our military museum. Mm -hmm. And this museum was um, built, uh, it was completed and dedicated in November of 2019. So of course, uh, COVID hit last year. So essentially a lot of folks, uh, well, there were a lot of folks at the dedication initially, but, um, but a lot of folks never had the chance to see it because the museum was closed for the vast majority of mm -hmm. 2020. So, but the military museum uh, is the product of uh, a lot of effort, um, a lot of fundraising. Uh, we have to thank uh, uh, Ann Knowles for for contributing so much leadership, and um, uh, um, Marshall Flatovich did a great job of helping raise funds. But uh, I think the thing was like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And when you go, have you been in it yet? I have. Okay. I have. Um, you, you notice that it's it's a first class yeah. uh, exhibit. And we have um, representation from every war. And we have representation from uh, all these soldiers from Sampson County. Um, uh, but uh, this is something that uh, would, would compete with anything on East Jones Street in Raleigh, mm -hmm. where, you know, Museum of History is located. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the impressive things with the museum here is, is, for example, what you're talking about with the military museum. But when I look at those other buildings there, it's the diversity of the kinds of things mm -hmm. that are there. I mean, you've got uh, you've got Native American history there. Mm -hmm. You've got African American history there. You've got uh, some of the first doctors mm -hmm. that were in the area. I mean, it's it's the intricacy of the involvement and bringing all that to one property site there on Lisbon Street. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's actually a large area. A lot of folks look well, at it and say, just that house. But once you walk into it, it's like you just wake up and go, wow, look at all these buildings. Well, you don't see. And you mentioned nine, but actually we have a total of 11 buildings right now, okay, including the front building. And uh, it's, it's easy to... to uh, get the wrong impression when you ride by it on Elizabeth Street saying, hmm, that's no, not much there. But you walk into our back door or uh, through to our back door and it opens up and there's a whole new world of buildings. And, and you know, first on the right hand side, we've got the military museum. Mm -hmm. uh, beside that, we have the law enforcement museum. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, David King, who was one of the founders of the museum, mm -hmm. was uh, a former Clinton police officer as well as a Howard Patrolman. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, law enforcement's one of his passions. And we've got a lot of folks involved in law enforcement in, in this area, of course, and um, or who have had family. Mm -hmm. So we've got quite a collection of uh, uh, Highway Patrol, memorabilia, Sheriff's Department, Clinton Peace, Police Department, a Fire Department, uh, names and people and faces that you'd recognize. Um, and then we have across in front of that, we have the Wooten store. And uh, I, that was donated, I believe, by Clark Wooten, mm -hmm. who is our, our chairman of the county commissioners. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, I think it was his father's store. But it's a country store just like you always saw in years gone by. But these stores are, are long gone, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. And now what's that store that was uh, that? Up there at Car Memorial Church. What There's, was that? That store used to be Mr. Glenn King's store. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it became uh, Johnny Williams' store. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, it had a, a long history back, I think it started back in the 40s. And the interesting thing with that, Joel, is when we talk about these country stores, they were really the, the focal point for not only mm -hmm. nutrition, mm -hmm. but for places that folks could go uh, to to actually barter, exchange, trade eggs for food, whatever. Trade it was gossip. amazing what these little country stores did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, they're they're pretty much all gone. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, but I recall as a youth, 
You know, it seemed like we went somewhere every every Sunday, you know, visiting cousins. You know, we'd go to Newton Grove or Smithfield or mm-hmm. wherever. And uh, it, we always had to beg, beg Dad to pull over and stop so we can get a drink, okay? Mm-hmm. A drink, not a Coke, sure. a drink, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but going back to the museum, uh, we've got, those are three items. We've got a, a building. We've got a 1941 fire truck that's been renovated, painted, and, and it's really a, a treat to see it. And, um, uh, and I think it's, uh, I think it runs, okay? Um, but it's, that's there. And then we got another building that's the Sampson County Sports Hall of Fame, I believe. And, uh, uh, that is, was built by funding from, uh, the Sampson County Sports Club. Hmm. And they supply the materials and, and, and information that go in the cases in there. So that's interesting. Uh, then we have our own exhibit hall. It's one of the older buildings that we have. A menagerie of things that from Samson's past, Clinton's past. Uh, then we've got another building that's a Grange building that was paid for by the Grange, okay, and erected there. And there are a number of uh, uh, agricultural items, old plows, old harnesses, uh, oxen harnesses, um, uh, just really interesting things that having to do with agriculture. Does people just donate stuff like that? Do they bring it in or do you have to go pick it up? Well, we get a lot of donation. I know that uh, with the um, uh, with the Grange building, uh, Judith Barnes uh, does a lot to help and oversee that collection. So she comes by on a regular basis. Now, in the building next to it is a, it's called the Bunning Cabinet, B-U-N, T-I-N-G, abutting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you recall when uh, Timberlake was being developed uh, about 25 years ago, uh, there was a house on the property, an old house. It was a Thomas Bunny house. And actually it was probably about, you know, almost 200 years old. And that's where and, Timberlake Country Club is, right? That's right. That's right. And, um, and so as they were preparing to develop the area, they wanted to remove that and demolish that old house. I mean, it hadn't been lived in in years. Uh, it had been um, uh, just torn apart by vandals, windows broken. But when they dismantled it, they discovered there was a log cabin at the very base of this house. Okay? Um, and, and they had built the house around the log cabin. And um, uh, we, we think the cabin was uh, originally belonged to uh, Dr. David Bunning, who was a medical doctor in, in the Revolution. But his son, he had several children, but his youngest son was Thomas Bunning. And Thomas became uh, a doctor, and, um, and he lived there. He, um, he married uh, the daughter of Governor Gabriel Holmes. And of course, he himself was a grandson of Richard Clinton, and you know, related to the Keenan. And so, they were some pretty powerful folks. But he had uh, three children, and uh, uh, his wife died about mm, uh, eighteen forty-five or thereabouts. And it was discovered uh, years later that uh, not much was said about it. But uh, he fathered uh, several children with his former, uh, his mistress, who was a former slave. And and you'll find we've got a lot of those bunting descendants here in Clinton right now, okay? And uh, really interesting story. And those folks are proud of their past. But um, uh, anyway, that's the bunting cabin, all right? Uh, next to it, the next two buildings were given to us by, I believe, uh, Norma, Moore, Claude Moore's wife. And if you know, uh, I mentioned Oscar Bilzer earlier, but Claude Moore was a, a, a historian extraordinaire, okay? He um, was from the Turkey area, and he was related to all these people. He knew the history, and he started covering this stuff as a young young boy. And um, uh, uh, and over time, he, he collected stuff. People would give him things. And... Um, uh, so anyway, we have a cabin museum and then Lewis Holmes house, which both of these came from the Claude Moore estate.
when we uh, come back, I want to pick up on the, the cabin museum and, and kind of go from there. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with uh, Joel Rose, director of the museum right here in Sampson County. We'll be back in a moment. Call a friend and stay tuned. At Home or Away, knowing who is at your door is priceless. Star Communications is here to help with its doorbell security camera by Skybell. Live viewing and two-way audio equips you with the ability to always see and greet anyone that shows up at your door. If this is the kind of confidence you are looking for, call Star Communications today at 1-800-706-6538 to learn more about this intelligent security that you can always depend on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're talking with Joel Rose on We Should Know Today, and we're talking about the History Museum. Joel, you're the director of the museum. As we went to break a while ago, we were talking about the various kinds of uh, venues that are there mm -hmm. and the 11 buildings that you were talking about that's on, on the property. We've gone through a couple. I want to back up uh, and and pick up on one before we would continue with the Claude Moore uh, cabin that's there. Um, the, the sports um, museum, uh, it seemed like I read in uh, one of it was, maybe it was in the newspaper that we've got several folks in there that went to National League participation. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and you're going to see if you go by that museum, the sports museum, you're going to see photos and plaques of a lot of these stars from you know Samson County who've gone on to I mean make names for themselves. Uh, an example, well of course you, you'll see Terry Hollins and you'll see. Uh, Bobby Robinson and Bob Lewis, uh, you know, they had special careers. Uh, Bobby Warren, uh, in his racing days, um, he's got uh, a, a, a plaque there for him. Um, but uh, yeah, we, there, are, there are a lot of those folks there. And what's really unique is that the sports club maintains this place. They're the ones that put the plaques in. The pictures and the photos, and so and they do a great job. And and if you if you go in there, you're going to see some people from. You'll see the Archie Brigmans. You'll see uh, uh, Walter uh, Rab from Midway. Mm -hmm. You'll see uh, Nathan Gay, uh, his photo yeah. and teams. Um, Chris Kaysen. Uh You'll see the Faircloth Twins, the the Mooses they call them. Back mm -hmm. they they played at Clinton High School, but they also played at Wake Forest. Yeah, you know we got a lot of those well photos. Of Jarris McPhail and uh, 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 Willie uh, Willie 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 Park. Parker. Willie Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. And yeah, these uh, are kind of the names that you're talking are kind of legends, historical legends. Oh, well, at least locally. And, yeah, you know, but. Uh, yeah. They are. So, so as as we move um, as we move to the the Claude Moore uh, building there that, now that that particular cabin or, or building was located on the property at Turkey is that correct? Yeah, and it was moved from I think it was Beasley's Mill Pond, which was closer to uh, Magnolia, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the the building is supposedly dated uh, 1750 and. Um, uh, but it's just, it's, this was a place where Claude had it moved to his property and he would put artifacts in it. And and people gave him these artifacts. He had his own little museum going on. That's right. And um, and and later he acquired this other building, this next door, uh, called the Holmes House, the Lewis Holmes House. And this was uh, supposedly, a, uh, the man I believe was building a, uh, that was supposed to be a kitchen. He was going to build a larger plantation home, but then, um, then the war came, and you know, he lost all his money, and he decided to live in that the smaller house uh, rather than uh, than uh, build a new one. He, he didn't have any means of supporting a new house. So, you mentioned a while ago maintenance. Uh, how, how expensive? And where does the funds come from to maintain these facilities? Because I think it, you know, logic would just tell us just looking at it, there's certain things has to be done. And mm -hmm. if nothing else, mm -hmm. just weatherization uh, has to happen. Well, we have we have air conditioning in it for each building. And actually, that is the biggest cost for us. OK, um, I mean, we have. Let's see. Ten. We've got 11 buildings back a total. And ten of them have air conditioning, okay. So in each unit. So again, that's our big cost every month is 
is air conditioning and, you know, to keep the temperatures right for these artifacts. Hmm. So um, there's a bit of irony in that, in the sense that when those buildings existed, they want no such thing as air conditioning. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but we get uh, support from the county, which we're most appreciative of. OK, uh, annually and, uh, and from the city as well. And of course, we, we have um, uh, fundraisers or not. I'm sorry, not fundraisers. We have we have campaigns and drives to mm -hmm. raise money for particular projects when we would do something, because we don't really don't have any money to say we want to do this or we want to do that. So we'll have to kind of get someone to agree to fund this or fund that. Mm -hmm. So and, and there are a number of projects that are on the horizon that we want to do. And, and you were asking about what, what I want to do. I, I'd like to try and enhance what we already have. Okay. And um, I, I would like, I mean, you know, we've, we've talked about expanding, maybe adding another building. Um, I would like to focus on some of the Sampson County history. Um, I would like to, and it's people, uh, example, uh, Macasia Autry, wonderful story there. You know, about the the Sampson bo County boy that went to uh, he went and joined the army at, and for the War of eighteen twelve, came out, became a teacher, decided to move west, um, and became a lawyer hmm. outside of Nashville. He was good friends with Andrew Jackson and Davy Crockett, and um, he he went into a mercantile business and um, with another attorney, and they went broke. And so here he was stuck with no means of income and and um, a, a wife and two children. So uh, Davy Crockett told him there was a opportunity down in Texas. If you signed up for the Texas Army, uh, they'd pay you cash and they would give you land after it was all over. So he went down, and of course, you know everyone in the uh, in the uh, Alamo was killed, as you recall, and including Autry. But um, uh, but then uh, he had a, a son uh, who grew up to become, I'm sorry, to become a, a lawyer, and he got involved in politics, and he was the, um, the Speaker of the House for the state of Mississippi. And he, in turn, uh, joined the Confederate Army, was killed, and uh, in 17... Or 1862, and uh, but in the meantime he had gone out to Texas and laid claim to that land, to the bounded land, a couple of thousand acres, and then uh, later on his son, when he turned 18, wanted to become a rancher, so he went out there and set up a ranch, but he met a met a judge who took him under his wing. He was only 18, mm -hmm. and he too. Uh, studied under this judge, and he too became a lawyer and a very prominent man uh, in, in, that, in the local county, in the local town. And uh, when it came time, they were trying to develop uh, uh, water wells to, to attract the industry. Uh, it was he, it was James Lockhart Autry that um, was tasked with contracting with a water well company and finding and locating, and he hired a company out of Kansas and uh, to drill a well, to drill three, three wells for $1,000. And uh, their first well, they hit oil, okay? And uh, they were kind of let down. They wanted water. And uh, or oil wasn't that big yeah. of a deal back then because there were no refineries mm. west of the Mississippi. Well, he contacted someone with Standard Oil who came out and um, developed, I mean, saw a good thing. He built a refinery and asked uh, Autry to be a partner. And they formed a company called Texas Oil and Gas. And uh, Autry was the secretary, no, well, he was, yeah, was a secretary for the comp uh, company. And he was also the uh, attorney for the, for the company. But uh, they went on to form this company called Texas Oil and Gas. And a few years later, they named it, renamed it Texaco. Isn't wow. that a cool story? Yeah. It happened. It's just an it, it just interesting cycle that caused that. And it started 
with somebody in Ultraville. That's right. Sampson County. That's right. That's and right. now there's a day they set aside over there. That's right. Kyle Autry does. Isn't that interesting, though? That yeah. is that is interesting because it, it goes back to what you and I've talked about off air, the importance of history and how it delivers us kind of to a certain place. And this is how we got there. This is how they got there. But it started over here in That's a right. little little town in San Francisco. Kind of, you know, yeah. it's kind of serendipitous, I guess you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's kind of fascinating when you look at it. So as you as you look at these properties down there and, and kind of uh, getting through this segment here, we've got a few more uh, a minute or so left. Um, the, the collective of all those things there. Uh, I want to talk about, and maybe we'll, this will carry over to our last segment, but I want to talk a bit about the kinds of folks that go to the museum. Uh, I know you have a thing out front where people will have the opportunity to sign their name and right. that kind of thing. Right. Do you get more groups, more individuals? Is it small groups? Is it couples? Is it? Well, you got to remember now, uh, I've only been there in this position for the last three months. And so uh, now we got a a Sunday school class uh, a month ago, but I haven't seen the groups, you know, and I, I plus think with COVID to, it's probably, yeah, good. I think folks have to can become reacclimated and warmed up to it again. Um, we just get a menagerie of folks. Um, uh, maybe folks bring their children, uh, older children. And um, because like I said, um, you know, you, you look at the front building and said, it's its own house. But you can't see behind all these buildings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me tell you about a, a couple of uh, people I had last week. Uh, two two young ladies that have their children, and um, one lives in Wilmington, and one lives in Lillington. And the one in Lillington, her husband was with the service. But these ladies were both from California, and they were friends, and they were trying to find some place halfway to meet between Wilmington and Lillington where they could go to lunch and find something to do. And they had Googled it and found our museum as, as a good midway point. And so um, I'm glad they came. Well, and, and, and that adds uh, not only value to the museum, but it adds value to the Chamber of Commerce and downtown planning and yeah. a, a, lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of things yeah. that happens here. So when we, see that. when we come back for our uh, last segment, I want to get into some things that maybe we've missed and also talk about some interesting things we've got coming up. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stay tuned. We're talking about history, the importance of history for you. And we're talking with Joel Rose. We'll be back in a moment. To get the most out of your electronic devices, you need a strong internet connection and a protected home Wi-Fi network. You need high-speed internet from Star. Star has the fastest, most affordable high-speed internet service available for all your devices. We have no long-term contracts or high-pressure sales. Our service speaks for itself, and switching is hassle-free. We take care of everything with free installation from a local company. High-speed internet from Star. Internet at the speed of life. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up on our last segment here on We Should Know. And again, my name is J.W. Simmons. I'm your host. Uh, over the past years in doing these shows, we've, we've kind of, uh, I guess, put the flavor of uh, information, education. Uh, many times we get feedback from you and what you think we need to maybe move forward in and talk about different subjects or maybe get somebody on. We really appreciate that. We like to have you Email us at we should know edu at gmail.com. That's we should know edu at gmail.com. Or you can just simply drop us a card or a letter if you'd like to Post Office Box 1482, Clinton, North Carolina. That's 28328. And again, the name of the show is We Should Know. Our guest today is Joel Rose. Uh, Joel, you're a well known uh, historian in the area. Um, you, you've had it for years an interest, and I'm going to use the word passion for history. Now the director of the museum, uh, been president of the Historical Society, a, uh, a very unique group of people, 50 to 70 people at times meeting quarterly. Uh, you, uh, The editor of the Huckleberry Newsletter, which I find totally in, intriguing, and if people are listening and they hadn't heard about that, they need to call the museum and, and talk to you and figure out how to get on that list mm -hmm. so they can either be mailed a copy or you can send them a copy. Um, we've talked about a number of things. I want to kind of the last segment today to to get your thoughts, uh, not only on the artifacts, 
Mm -hmm. But we've seen over the past year, uh, there's been a lot of concern about statues and different things being moved and and uh, bringing back sad memories and, and horrific memories for people in some cases. Help us understand the significance of artifacts and things of remembrance, whether they're memorials or whatever. Um, and is is there a place that they should be from a history perspective and a place that they shouldn't be. I think it's um, there's a certain resolve there that seems to be splitting mm. people. And, and I want to try to get a, a feel for it because I know there's one statue, I believe is now at the museum that mm -hmm. was moved from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of give us your sense as a historian about what all that means. Uh, well, J.W., like so many other people, uh, in Sampson County and in the South, uh, I had ancestors who served in the Confederate Army. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of their service. Uh, they they fought for what they believed and um, or fought to defend the South in some cases. And um, so I, I was a little bit um, disappointed to see it to the statue downtown come down. OK, but, you know, over time that I've I've learned and, you know, I've, through some of my uh, black friends that uh, uh, the statue was offensive to them and uh, maybe explaining that, uh, you know, if they were approaching the court and had to go to court and had to walk by the statue and, and look at it and say, mm, how am I going to get a fair shake, mm -hmm. you know, with the Confederate, you know, um, so. Uh, Someone, as you recall, and I think it was August or July, uh, someone tried to remove our, our statue downtown uh, using the rope from the flagpole mm -hmm. and to pull it over. And uh, they pulled it down to like a 45 degree angle. And uh, of course, the county, which it was on county property. So uh, the county removed it and um, and made some repairs. And we now have it in our museum, which is actually where it belongs, mm -hmm. okay, and um, uh, and and so, um, I mean, I, th I think it's, it's just time to recognize that fact, and um, that's a part of history. You know, uh, of course, you know if it's a if it's a town up north and they've got a statue, they get to keep theirs. You know, which I mean, it's a Union soldier, mm -hmm. and they've the companies that made these statues were like out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And they'd send salesmen around, and, and you know, here's you can pick this like from a catalog. Yeah. And uh, of course, it, it might be uh, it, if it's the same statue in the South, he's considered a Confederate soldier. Mm -hmm. But if it's in the North, he's considered a, uh, it's considered a Union soldier. Mm -hmm. So, and most of them are not really expensive. I mean, they, if like the thought had fallen, ours had fallen, it would have shattered. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it did not. And so it is in the museum, and, and we're glad it's there. And, uh, and I think you'll be seeing this sort of thing uh, done with most of these uh, statues going forward. And, and again, I mean, what's the alternative to see it destroyed? Um, yeah. So, and, and it, we move on, we grow. And, I, uh, I get the sense from you over time and, and communication. That that you're a person that looks at the factual reality of history. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Is is there and and there are those that would say that that we're that some way we're trying to go to the history book and remove certain things that we don't want to talk about. Is is well, that healthy <clears throat> in the sense of not being able to communicate? Is it is it a divisive thing? Is it important for us to? to do that so we won't be divided? Or is, does it cause us to, as some people would, would probably put it, that it causes us to have the potential of repeating something that we don't want to repeat anymore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, I, I think it's, um, uh, I think these things evolve. And I think uh, over time, uh, the, the removal of it uh, will be a, a kind of a faint memory, but We've got it in there in the museum, and we can discuss it there. And um, I think I mentioned to you earlier that I had received a request from a, 
uh, Museum of Art mm-hmm. in California to uh, they wanted to borrow our statue and, and others from throughout the country that they could they could receive and they want to make it a, a topic of discussion and examination and reflection and so um, uh, kind of like the way they moved the Egyptian mummies around yeah yeah but this is uh, again this, they were willing to pay for the shipping of it. Uh, all the way to California, Los Angeles. And uh, I just had to tell them no real quick because, yeah. you know, I think <laughs> I think if I if I let that thing go to California, some uh, some folks would have my head. Yeah. You know, but um, uh, is 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 that statue made out of stuff you mentioned that it was breakable? Is, is it metal? Or it's what? metal, but it's thin metal. Thin. Metal. OK. And, and again, um, I, I know in the state of North Carolina, if I recall, there are probably 50 or 75 of these statues. Mm-hmm. And again, most of them came about around the turn of the century. And I know there was one in Raleigh, uh, one of the first uh, uh, that was erected. And Stonewall Jackson's daughter was there for the ceremony. Mm-hmm. OK, but with with the Civil War, so many young men who had never been more than 20 miles from home uh, died 400 miles from here and their bodies were buried there. Mm. And so there was no monument in the cemetery. So initially they were built as a, mon- uh, as a monument or memorial Mass to, grave to, kind of to, to, to these, uh, to these soldiers that fell a distance away. So, um, uh, but then they started putting them in, in public places and it became a trend and every little town had one. So, I want to. I want to kind of. Uh, of course, as as always, we kind of run narrow in time when we get yeah. to the last of the show. I want to mention a uh, an effort we're put, putting forward uh, with Star Communications to do a history show, uh, and of course, uh, you have uh, gallantly agreed to be the host of that. Hopefully, we're going to pull that together sometime in the next few weeks. Seems like this past year has been, the, uh, of course, the year of pandemic and everything changed. Mm-hmm. All the roads to accomplishing things changed direction. Mm-hmm. So. Hopefully we're back on track. As we move forward with that, I, I want to kind of let folks know that uh, as host of that show, you're in a very important position, not only in the community, mm-hmm. but the position you hold at the museum, uh, your history is, uh, history and position as uh, historical society, as president of historical society, to guide us as we look at various aspects of our history. And one of those we alluded to a while ago, which was the, uh, the way we... Uh, exchanged and, and bought goods and products through country stores. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And we've, we've talked with uh, Commissioner, uh, the Chairman uh, Wooten, and he's willing to have a conversation mm-hmm. with you. So we're hoping to put that together. As right. you look at that, um, I think that we can add some value mm-hmm. uh, in the sense of, number one, passion, and number two, in the factuality of the information. And uh, in many cases, talking to folks like yourself mm-hmm. uh, that's actually visited a lot of sites around mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll give you a, a minute or so to just well, speak Well, I, I will tell you that th- there's, uh, over, the, over the years I've learned uh, that there are so many events, historical events that took place in Sampson County going back to the revolution. OK, like there was a, a skirmish between patriots and, and, and loyalists uh, there at the Little Coherie uh, and that road that's kind of back behind uh, Salem Pizza going back that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, there was a skirmish and people were killed. Um, there was a, a couple of skirmishes down below, uh, close to the Coherie uh, Bridge there at uh, uh, as, as you leave town going past Coherie Country Club. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, there was a, a secret meeting taking place between that they were recruiting Tories or loyalists. And uh, James Keenan and his brother-in-law, Richard Clinton, found out about it and they wanted to break it up. So they brought in horse others on horseback and they rode down trying to break up the, the meeting. And James Keenan's brother, uh, Owen, was shot and killed. So. Uh, I mean, it's just a lot of stuff and things took place on uh, old Warsaw Road, uh, uh, British troops there. Um, just there's just a lot to share. Well, we got we've come into a close. I want to thank you for being with us today and also tell folks if they've got some information or uh, or contacts or some good 
uh, historical uh, stories they, they need to get out to contact you at the History Museum, mm -hmm. and we can maybe work those into the show. So thank you for yeah. being with us today. I'm glad to. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with us, and we always look forward to seeing you here each and every week on Tuesdays. It also airs at 7 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday on Star Communications Channel 16. We look forward to seeing you again next week, and may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.